Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and today is one of our hands-on episodes where we're going to teach you about fruit dissection. Now, I'm joined today by Dr. Jennifer Hall Rivera. Have you ever done any fruit dissection in the kitchen recently? Uh, almost every day because I, I juice every single morning. So, But I, we're going to yes. talk about a little more careful yes. dissection than chopping up some fruits and vegetables for a salad or mm -hmm. something like that. We're going to be doing a fruit dissection where you're actually going to be describing the things that you're looking at and trying to make a careful description and sketch of the different parts that you find to really study what God has created in these amazing fruits and things that we're looking at. Now, we talked about this on our Function of Fruits episode and also connected to our Function of Flowers episode, how fruits are connected to the flower structure of a plant, and they're different from vegetables. Now, is a cucumber a vegetable? Hmm, the seeds are inside. We talked about that, right. right? And the fact that it's encased and it has seeds inside and it's fleshy, yes, right? Yes, we've so. got the fleshy structure <laughs> mm -hmm. and seeds mm -hmm. inside of the cucumber. So it's actually not a vegetable mm -hmm. in botanical terms, although we'd think of it as a vegetable if we were preparing it mm -hmm. as a food source. So this is actually a fruit, and we call this a pepo type of fruit. And we talked about all the different types of fruits mm -hmm. in those episodes. So what makes that different from something like a potato or a carrot or an onion? Well, these don't have seeds, mm -hmm. right? They don't have seeds encased inside. They grow differently and therefore reproduce differently yeah. as well. So with, with the onion, mm -hmm. we're actually eating a modified piece of the stem down here. If this were a bulbous onion, it would have the big bulb here and we're actually eating parts of the, the stem. The potato is actually a modified part of the stem called a tuber. And then a carrot, we're actually eating the root structure of that. So when we're eating leaves or roots or stems or shoots or other types, we're actually eating the vegetable part. And when we're eating anything that's got the fleshy part with seeds, we're eating the fruit part. So we said in the episode that intelligence is knowing that a tomato is actually a fruit, but wisdom is not putting it in your fruit salad along with your pineapple and your watermelon and other things, because yes. that would not taste good. I'm actually a fruit. So we've talked also about some of the different structures of fruits and the types of fruits. And we learned that strawberries aren't really berries. Aren't berries. Mm -hmm. We learned that blackberries aren't really berries. Mm -hmm. And we learned that tomatoes are berries. So you can learn more about that in the episode. But what we want you to do is to think about dissecting a fruit in a way that's going to be orderly and let you understand all the different parts that are inside of the fruit. Now, this isn't going to work real well if you're trying to do something very small. So you'd want to pick a larger fruit. What types of fruits do you think would work well for a dissection to look at the parts well, inside? Well, an apple's going to work okay. very well. Apple would be uh, great. Even type an orange uh -huh. would be work great. Something large or even if you want to get really adventurous and do like a cantaloupe, okay. right? Yep. That would be a good one as well. Yep. Even a watermelon, watermelon. something mm -hmm. larger like that. Um, you could do something like a plum. Okay, or a plum or a peach or a nectarine. These are a type of fruit called a droop, and you could dissect one of those and see what's inside of it. Mm -hmm. Blueberries would be a little tricky, but you are gonna find those structures mm -hmm. in there. So if you wanna, if you wanna try something larger and then do something smaller after you learn the basic structures, uh, you could do that. Now, all the instructions for this activity in the dissection are gonna be found on our Unlocking Science page. We've got a PDF prepared for you to print off and you'll find a link to that in the description of this video. And you're going to be going through these things very carefully and analyzing all the pieces and parts and walk through it just like the um, activity suggests. But you don't need anything fancy. So you've probably got a cutting board at home, mm -hmm. probably got some sharp knives. Uh, you'll need something fairly sharp to be able to cut through. But that's a good reminder whenever you're using instruments like that. You have adult supervision for you younger kids and make sure for your older kids you've got uh, parents knowing what you're doing because last thing you want to do is cut yourself and not have somebody there to help you yes. if there is an accident so make sure you're doing that supervised a hand lens or something where you can look at things a little bit magnified or even your phone might have a magnifier mm -hmm. app you can use mm -hmm. the camera on a pair of tweezers or a probe or something you can kind of poke and, and prod things mm -hmm. around with would be helpful maybe a paper plate or a tray to set things off to the side so you don't need a lot of fancy equipment for this one and you can accomplish a lot and when we think about this, we're going to be analyzing the fruit 
and looking at it, making careful descriptions mm -hmm. about it like a good scientist would do. And then you're going to be talking about the type of the fruit, trying to understand that. So go back and watch the episode mm -hmm. that we did. It'll help you, help you identify those types of things. Um, and looking carefully at that. So we talked about some cues on the fruits. Like on this apple, we can notice that there's these different structures down here. These are actually the leftover sepals. So you're gonna look for structures like this. On this cucumber, we can see a little scar here, right on the tip. And we can see a scar down here where the vine was attached. So you're gonna be looking carefully for different clues like that on the structure of the fruit to help you answer some of the questions in the activity. Now we're also going to be cutting up these fruit. That's part mm -hmm. of the dissection part. So why don't you explain the difference between a cross-sectional view of something and a longitudinal section? So when you have a longitudinal section, I always you know, tell students, think of long ways, right? Mm -hmm. Go the long so when way. we look at the apple, if you're gonna do a longitudinal section, you're gonna be cutting this way. We're gonna go long ways mm -hmm. on our fruit. If you're talking about the cucumber, you'd be cutting it in half this way. But a cross section is pretty much going straight across, horizontally across the dissection specimen. So especially depending on what type of fruit you're using mm -hmm. would determine which type of cut you use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the apple, to get the, there's really you would like to have two apples for this. Because yes. you can learn a lot from cutting it longitudinally, but you can learn a lot from cutting it as a cross section mm -hmm. as well which is probably why you have two apples that here. That is why I yes. have two. So if we think about making one of these cuts, we can make a cut down through the middle of here, very carefully getting my fingers out of the way. I'm trying to come right down through the middle so that I can see all the different structures inside of there. And so I've cut close to the stem and I can see the pieces. You can see I've even cut through one of the seeds. We can see the ovary structure in here and the fleshy part out here. So you're gonna make a sketch of all of these pieces and try and describe them, think about the position of the ovary and all of those things. Now, if I cut a cross section of this apple, I could cut a cross section up here, and you might wanna make multiple cross section cuts, and that's not very interesting. It looks pretty boring, we've got a little bit of structure right in here we can see in the skin around the outside. But if I come down into the middle of the ovary, and I cut through there, we can actually start to see some different structures in these little canyons coming out in the over here and these little dark spots out here. Now, you could potentially add a little drop of food coloring or something and kind of smear it around here and you might get some of these pieces to show up a little bit better, but you'll actually get to see the structure of the ovary. Now, the same thing would be true for the cucumber or a lemon or the nectarine, the tomato. If you have a couple of them, you can cut them in those different sections and try and see all the different parts. Now inside of there, you're gonna be able to count lots of things. Mm -hmm. okay? Like the ovaries, you'll be able to count the number of chambers in the ovaries. Uh, if you were doing an orange, that would be the number of wedges that were inside of it. Um, you'll be able to count the number of seeds mm -hmm. and maybe how many seeds are in each ovary. So you'll wanna make very careful observations about those things and try to record them as carefully and accurately as you can. Right? Another thing that we talked about is the relationship between the flower mm -hmm. and the fruit structure. Mm -hmm. So you can find online resources that would probably have pictures of an apple blossom, mm -hmm. unless it's the right time of year and you've got one nearby, you can go look at those specimens directly. But we want you to think about the relationship between the number of petals on the flower and the number of ovaries. Mm -hmm. Often those are connected. For example, the lilies that we've looked at in a couple of episodes, we can see a very clear pattern of three leaf structures. So we've got three sepals around the outside, and then we've got three petals around the inside. And if we were to look carefully at one of these small ovaries that's ripened here, so this structure is a ripened ovary, and we were to pull that off of the plant and cut it carefully in half, you're gonna see very clearly that there are three ovaries inside there. So that's very related to the structure of the leaves. And you can use your hand lens or something to look at those things more carefully and see how those seeds are arranged. Sometimes they're connected to the outside wall of the ovary, sometimes they're connected to the middle, and sometimes they float around. 
So something like a bell pepper would be another interesting mm -hmm. one to do, to look at the It'd be great if they went back and watched the episode on monocots and dicots. Yes. Because uh, that's additional classification you could do when you yeah. do your fruit dissection mm -hmm. as well. Yep, so that episode on the function of flowers, mm -hmm. we talked about the difference between dicots and monocots. Mm -hmm. And then even the seeds, if you have a large enough seed, you could try to carefully dissect that. Now that's one, if you're using a knife, you would want a pair of tweezers or something to hold the seed because the seed coat is extra hard for protection. And it can be slippery sometimes mm -hmm. And too, very so. slippery. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the funnest thing about getting a lemon at a restaurant is you get a little seed out of there and you squeeze it between your finger mm -hmm. and shoot it across the table at your little sister. No, but that's not a good idea. Don't do that, <laughs> you might get in trouble. <laughs> okay. So we can see this amazing variety of fruits that God has created even if we call them vegetables, like the cucumber, mm -hmm. but lots of different things. So whatever you choose to dissect, use it as an opportunity to just explore God's amazing creation. Mm -hmm. He's made these amazing things for us. And the more that we learn about his creation, the more we understand about who he is mm -hmm. and how creative he is. And we can reflect his character as we seek to honor him by stewarding the resources he's given us. We can glorify him by enjoying these wonderful flavors and, and scents that we get from the fruits that he's given us and just be um, in awe of all he's created for us. Mm -hmm. So when I think about the best fruits and the way to, to enjoy these things, often it's mixing those flavors together mm -hmm. and making that fruit salad. Okay? I would throw in some apple mm -hmm. and some pineapple, maybe some grated coconut, coconuts of fruit, some strawberries, mm -hmm. mix those all together. <laughs> but I'm probably going to leave the tomatoes yeah. out and even the avocados. Avocados are another type of fruit I probably wouldn't be putting in a fruit salad. Might leave this out And too. leave the cucumbers yeah. out too. So be wise about what you're putting in that fruit salad, but know that a lot of the things we typically call vegetables are fruits. All right, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy that hands-on activity. Remember, you can find the uh, link for that in the description to this video. Download it, run through this, and Explore all that God's made for you.